From Video Central here in Cleveland, Ohio, I'm Ray Glasser, and this is the Cleveland Tech Report. My name is Ray Glasser, and this is the season premiere of the Cleveland Tech Report. We are now entering our third year here on Kerry Decker's Nightlife Show. Uh, below me here is my video family, as it were. Six, count them, six beta machines, and I have more in other places here in the house, plus a VHS as well. So, uh... I think I've had enough experience using these suckers to uh, be able to talk about home video. Now for those of you who might be watching the Nightlife Show for the first time and you might be wondering what is going on here, let me kind of back up and explain. My name is Ray Glasser. I'm a good friend of Kerry Decker's. I live in Cleveland, Ohio. And I have a great interest in home video, as does, of course, Kerry, who is doing the Nightlife Show. Uh, Nightlife, as you well know, is being shot with home video equipment. We're not using professional TV equipment or anything like that. This is, uh, we're talking about home video cameras, home beta and VHS machines, and the like. And Carrie and I, matter of fact, met through the hobby of home video way back in late 1977. Because back then, there were no video stores to rent tapes from, and uh, the hobby, the whole field of home video is just not what it is today in the mid-1980s. So the only way to build a video library, which we were all doing back then, was to trade tapes with other people around the country. And that's how Carrie Decker and I met, even though we're about 2,000 miles apart. But Carrie asked me many years ago to uh, tape some bits for his nightlife show regarding the world of home video. And my wife and I are both in the video business as a part-time endeavor, and we have to keep up with all the new goings-on in this ever-changing world of home video. So I thought I would share my knowledge and my information with you people out there in cable TV land, as it were. Now, as I said, we are now entering our third year on the Tech Report, and a year ago I came on TV just like this, although we were in front of my video library over that direction, and I was talking about some of the shows that I'd be doing in the next couple of months on the Tech Report. I got a whole list of shows, and we did do some of them, not all, mainly due to time constraints, but we did do a show showing uh, how the special effects on VCRs look on TV and how they're done and so forth, things like that. We also discussed the LaserDisc video disc system which of course is not the RCA system, but the Pioneer of Magnavox system. We talked about how to organize a videotape library, and uh, we also did some other shows that weren't really in tune with video. Uh, we did one about a Corvette car show here in town. We also did a show uh, from a Japanese restaurant showing how the cook prepares the dishes at the table, which is uh, really a lot of fun to watch and is <laughs> good eating too. But this year we're gonna try to get some more shows done on the world of home video. And uh, we have a new Betamax here that will help us do the shows. It's over there. It's my newest machine with that big wheel on the side, okay? It's, it's Sony SLHF 900, and it has some editing features that the common Betamaxes and VHS machines don't have. And I intend to do one tech report devoted to that Sony machine down there. And we'll take a closer look at that in the next couple of months. But anyway, let me give you a couple of ideas uh, as to shows I intend to do this year on the Tech Report. Again, some of these are carryovers from last year that we just didn't get to, okay? My pet project for many years has been a history of home video, an all-inclusive history of the field of home video. And this year would be a good time to do it, especially because home video has now hit about 10 years, 1975 to 1985. So I, th I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of summarize and capsulize the first 10 years of home video beginning with Sony's first Betamax, which was, was released in 1975, up until the brand new one-piece camcorders and eight millimeter systems of 1985. We will also cover in one show the main differences between beta and VHS. For those of you who might be considering buying a home video system in the near future, you've talked to friends and relatives and they all have one and you want to get one of your own, we're gonna go over the fine edges of beta versus VHS, what you should get and why, okay? We're also going to cover the fall of beta, the original pioneering system in home video was Sony's Betamax system. And over the first 10 years of the home video revolution, it has gone from 100% of the video market down to about 18. We're going to look at why. We're also going to talk about the generation gap in video, 
What happens when you copy tapes over and over and over again? And why does why do cable TV shows like this? Why do they look they look not quite as sharp and as clear as your network shows on ABC or NBC or CBS? Why is the quality of these tape shows a little bit less than the network shows? We'll cover that as well. How about old TV shows? What do hardcore video files collect on videotape? What are they looking for? You know, movies are a dime a dozen. You can take movies off cable. You can go to your corner video store and rent movies, but what do the die-hard, hardcore video files collect on videotape? What are they looking for? We'll cover that in that show about what video files collect. They collect TV shows is what they collect. We're going to hit that this year. I was going to do a show last year on color video cameras. Now, color video cameras are becoming a little bit more and more passe with every passing year. Why is that? Two reasons. Number one, the color video camera is now becoming what they call a camcorder. It's an all-in-one piece of gear that's both a camera and a video recorder, a VCR together. So instead of carrying a camera on your shoulder and a video recorder on your side, you can now carry a one-piece camcorder on your shoulder, and that's the whole unit right there. But we still want to talk about specifications, differences, and price ranges. In other words, what you will get when you pay for whatever you pay for these things. So we'll talk about camcorders. The second reason that cameras are becoming passe is the fact that slowly creeping into the world of video is the 8mm system, pioneered by Kodak, then it's been uh, uh, followed through by Sanyo, Sony, uh, Polaroid, Magnavox, some other companies every month are coming up with the 8mm video system, which is not beta or VHS, it's its own format. So we'll talk about the cameras in that line as well. We're going to look at beta hi-fi and VHS hi-fi. What does hi-fi mean? How is it different from standard videotapes? And what exactly is it? And why do you have to pay more for it? Okay, hi-fi. How about the world of satellite television? What are satellites? You're always hearing about cable TV having satellite problems or satellite scrambling or buy a backyard earth station. We'll talk about satellite dishes on a tech report. We're also going to talk about panning and scanning. Now you might say, what on earth is this? Well, now think about this. When you go to the movie and you see a big blown up picture at the, uh, at the movie theater, you're seeing what they call a cinemascope or Panavision print. It's shaped oblong like this. When you come home and watch on your own color TV, you have a TV picture like this. What happens to the outer edges? We'll talk about that in this tech report about panning and scanning and how the video engineers have to, have to actually decide what scenes to follow as they move the camera. We'll hit that as well. We're going to also compare, in one tech report, video magazines. You might not believe this, but there's about 30 different video magazines on the market. There's a lot more than just video and video review. We'll also uh, compare video magazines that are within the trade, people that own video stores or people that are in the electronics business like we are. Uh, we're going to look at their magazines as well and why some of them can cost $500 a year for subscriptions. We're also going to show some video accessories. Right over here is one of them. It's called a proc amp or processing amp. And we'll show you why it's good to have, what it does, how much it costs, and the like. We're also going to show the very first home VCR that caught on. I have to add that caught on in there because the first home VCR was actually released way back in 1971. And we'll, of course, hit that in our history of home video tech report. But the first home VCR that caught on was, of course, the first Sony Betamax which was released back in 1975, a full 10 years ago, for $2,500. And it's actually thanks to that piece of equipment that we now have all these pieces of video gear and VHS and 8mm, of course, as well. We'll also be showing that. And as I said earlier, we're going to be talking about this little gem over here, the SLHF 900. We're going to show you why this is the most advanced VCR in the market. And will it help the beta system? Will, it, will beta continue to slide downhill? Who knows? Maybe it'll help, maybe it won't, but we'll see. But anyway, those are some of the shows I intend to do this season on the Tech Report. Now, that's quite a big list. And as I said earlier, this is more or less a part-time endeavor uh, on my part and on Carrie's part as well, bringing you these shows here on cable TV. Now, Carrie, of course, has a full-time business, and he's got uh, other interests in his life and all that. As for me, I've got a full-time, six to eight-week job, uh, the video business that my wife are into on a part-time basis plus running a home and children, so forth and so on. So these shows here on the Tech Report are a thing that we try to do in our spare time, say once a month, maybe if we're lucky, twice a month. 
So again, this is a spare time endeavor. We're not professionals, but we do want to share our knowledge and our expertise, as it were, with you here on the Tech Report. And by the way, these are only outlines of ideas. Now, if you have something that you might want to see, maybe you have a certain question about a certain piece of video gear, or you want to know why something works in a certain way or why it doesn't work, maybe you have your own idea for a show that you might want to see. Hey, this is your vehicle to get your ideas on the air. By all means, write us at Nightlife, P.O. Box 7194, Orlando, Florida, 32854. Let us know what you want to see here on the Tech Report. Write us, or even send us a videotape. Sit in front of a video camera like I'm doing right now, although of course I'm standing, and talk to Carrie, talk to me, tell us what you want to see here on cable TV. You know, home video is still very new. There's about a 20% saturation in American homes of VCRs right now, which means one out of five people has a VCR, okay? Now, it took 10 years to hit that 20%, and we're talking about TV households, not all households. What will happen in the next 10 years is very, very hard to say. Uh, experts predict that this rapid growth in video cannot hold its own forever. It's going to start sliding down in the next couple of years, plus the fact that 8 millimeter is complicating the matter even more. Will people continue to buy VHS and beta, or will they kind of shove them aside and go for the 8 millimeter system? Which raises another question. Will video stores be willing to carry three formats of pre-recorded tapes? VHS, beta, 8 millimeter. Who knows? There's a lot of variables here. And we'll be keeping you posted on the tech report. Also, at least once a year, my wife and I try to make it out to Las Vegas in uh, January to the Consumer Electronics Show. And we try to take our video cameras and recorders inside there uh, for the four-day event and make a capsulized review of what's going on inside the industry. Because that's a place where all the dealers and the uh, exhibitors get together from all around the world and they show off their wares for the coming year. And this is, by the way, a closed show to the public. It's not a show that anybody can walk into and look at all the uh, products. This is a closed show. You have to be in the business in order to get into the show. And of course we are, so we can make it out there. And this is always a big thing for us because it's our one main vacation of the whole year. And it's uh, an opportunity for us to see what's going to be coming along in the next 6 or 12 months in the world of home video and consumer electronics overall. And we uh, try to do at least a one-part, sometimes two-part show here on the Nightlife Show showing what's going to be happening in the next year in home video. So that's also coming up, hopefully, in the near future. So we have plenty of ideas. We have the time, the equipment, and all that to do some tech reports for you. And uh, all I can do now is say I'm very happy to be here. This is our third year starting up on the Nightlife Show. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing some feedback from you fine people out there telling us what you want to see, uh, ask us any questions that we might be able to answer for you, and things like this. So I'm going to turn it back over to Kerry Decker right now, and uh, I'll be seeing you maybe next week, maybe in two weeks or three weeks, whatever it might be, with some more information on the world of home video. So Kerry, take it away, and from Cleveland, Ohio, I'm Ray Glasser saying we'll be seeing you again in the near future. Okay, bye-bye.